Welcome to another GNU Cash Quick Start Tutorial. I'm Laura from TheBusyBeePost.com and in today's tutorial I will show you how to enter a split transaction into GNU Cash. If you like my tutorials and find them helpful, please subscribe and don't forget to give a thumbs up. Let's begin. Every transaction in GNU Cash has at least two splits. In the previous tutorial, I entered a simple transaction, the opening deposit of $500. It is a simple transaction because it only involved the two accounts, the checking account and the equity opening balance account. A transaction with three or more accounts involved is called a split transaction. For example, I have a $70 receipt from Max Office Supplies for two separate business expenses. I purchased three cartons of copy paper and some shipping envelopes. And I want to enter this transaction as a split transaction because I want to assign two different business expenses listed on this one receipt to two separate accounts in the chart of accounts. Begin by opening the checking account register by double clicking on the checking account in the chart of accounts. In the date field, enter the date of your transaction if it is different from the current date which is listed by default. In the num field, enter a transaction number if it applies. In the description field, in the previous tutorial on entering simple transactions, I talked about when you may not necessarily need to enter a description in the description field since descriptions are optional. But in this case, even though I have the option of leaving the description field blank, I think it's relevant that I enter the payee Max Office Supplies. This way, I don't have to guess who I paid $70 to for business supplies I purchased and I certainly don't want to have to dig up the receipt just to find out. Next, use the tab key on your keyboard to tab across the row to the withdrawal field and enter the full amount of the transaction you are entering. I will enter $70 which is the full amount of this transaction. To activate the split transaction select split on the toolbar and the system will automatically insert two additional rows. On the first additional row you will see where the system automatically entered the checking account in the account field and the full amount of the transaction which in my example is seventy dollars has been automatically entered by the system in the withdrawal field and in the last row an additional seventy dollars has been automatically entered in the deposit field from this point on it is very important that you continue to use the tab key to tab across the rows Using the enter key at this point can throw the transaction off and you will have to start over. Let's begin. Tab across the field until your cursor lands on the third row of the transaction. One, two, three. You can tell when you're on the third row because the row will be highlighted. This is where you will begin entering descriptive information about the transaction. If you look at the top of the title bar in each column you will notice the titles have changed once you activate the split transaction. In the action field here you can enter a descriptive word to describe the transaction or you can click inside the action field text box until the drop down arrow appears then click on the drop down arrow to see the options you have available to describe this transaction. Here I could select receipt as a description of this transaction. Since the action field is optional, you can simply leave it blank if you choose to do so. The next field, the memo field, here you have the option of entering additional descriptive information about this transaction. In this example, I entered the payee in the description field, Max Office Supplies. So now I know who I paid, but how about what did I pay for? Here in the memo field, I can enter three cartons of copy paper. Now this gives me a little more detailed information about my transaction. Next, tab over to the account field and here you need to assign an account to this transaction from the chart of accounts that applies. You can click on the text box 
until the drop down arrow appears and use the drop down arrow to display the chart of accounts and then search for and select the account. Or you can use the GNU Cash Auto Fill feature and have the system search for it for you by typing in the first few letters of the account name. In this example, I want to assign the three cartons of copy paper transaction to the office supplies account. So I will enter OFF. And when the account appears, I simply click on the highlighted account name and it is automatically entered into the text field box. I don't know about you, but I like that autofill feature. Next, I will tab to the deposit field. As I mentioned earlier, the full amount of the transaction was automatically entered into the deposit field. You have to change it to reflect the actual dollar amount of the transaction you are entering. Since the cost of the copy paper is only $45, I will change the $70 to reflect the actual cost of the copy paper, $45. Now, I have one more item to enter, so I need an additional row to enter the last item on the receipt. To add additional rows, use the tab key to tab to the end of the row, and an additional row will be automatically added. I will enter the last item on the receipt shipping envelopes in the memo field. Tabbing over to the transfer field, this time I will enter PO, which is the first few letters of the account I want to assign to this transaction, postage and delivery. Now with it highlighted, I will select it and move to the deposit field. In the deposit field, the $25 balance was automatically entered when I changed the $70 to $45 for the cost of the copy paper and since $25 is the correct balance amount for this transaction I will select enter on the toolbar to record the changes and save to save the changes the split transaction is complete which is confirmed by the fact that the word split transaction is displayed instead of the details of the transaction the reason you are no longer able to see the full details of the transaction is because we are in the basic ledger view. Now, if at any time you want to view the details of the split transaction, select view on the menu bar and when the menu opens, select auto split ledger view by clicking on the circle icon next to the auto split ledger. Now you should be able to see the full details of the split transaction in the checking account register. I just want to take a moment and point out one thing. You may have noticed when I was entering the transaction that I bypassed the R field and that's because the R field has to do with whether or not the transaction has been reconciled. The N that you will find that appears next to the transactions now simply means the transaction has not been reconciled. Now to return to the basic ledger view, simply select view again from the menu bar and this time when the menu opens click on the circle icon next to basic ledger view to return to the basic ledger view. Once you have finished with the checking account register you can close out by clicking on the X next to the checking account title. Back on the chart of accounts, when I look at my results, my checking account balance has been reduced by the $70 expense. Remember from the previous tutorial on entering a simple transaction, I entered the $500 opening balance. Now the new balance is $430, which is correct. And when I look at the expense category, I can see it is tracking the $70 expense and in the expenses sub accounts, I can see that the $45 was spent on office supplies and the $25 was spent on postage and delivery. In summary, a split transaction gives you the option of breaking down a lump sum transaction and assigning the individual amounts to different accounts in the chart of accounts that the transactions apply to.